Hi, my name is Dr. Alon Orlev. I'm a neurosurgeon. And uh, this is gonna be an instructional video about uh, rhinology for neurosurgeons. I think many of us uh, neurosurgeons that do pituitary surgeries uh, know what to do once we get to the cella, but we know very little rhinology. So, and I think that it's uh, quite important for us to understand uh, rhinology as we work with rhinologists um, doing endoscopic and the nasal uh, pituitary and cellar region tumor resections. Um, I think that when we understand rhinology and when we understand their trajectories or, and the approaches, then we can talk to our rhinologist uh, better and, and plan uh, ahead for the surgery. Uh, so I'm gonna walk us through the different, the various approaches that we can do through the nose. I, before we start, I want to thank my mentors, um, Dr. Gary Gallia um, from uh, neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins, Dr. Masaru Ishii and Dr. Nile London, um, a rhinologist, phenomenal rhinologist I learned a lot from at Johns Hopkins and recently um, Dr. Litvak uh, from neurosurgery and Dr. Nisley uh, from ENT rhinologists that work here at, uh, at Swedish. And uh, let's begin. We begin in the right nostril, and we're taking a look. We can see now the infer inferior turbinate. Behind it, along the floor, we can we reach the coena, and nasopharynx is deep to that. And medial is the septum. Now we can move along the septum and find the sphenoid floor, which is what we can see now, and keep going up and we will see the os, the sphenoid os. And that's the easiest way to find the os. Again, from the coena to go along the septum and find on the face of the sphenoid the os. Now we're going to do the same thing on the left side, it's similar. Uh, we slide along the floor and see the septum and again walk up, see the face of the sphenoid along the septum and we will find the os. That's the sphenoid os. We can also see as we slide back that the septum has an inferior spur. We're now back in the right nostril and we're going to discuss the modules of approaching um, it into the sphenoid sinus and, tra and the transphenoidal. So the first one is, is a very basic lateralization of the, um, of the middle turbinate without fracturing. This is what I'm doing now. Um, using a freer, uh, you can mostly out, out fracture the middle turbinate and that gives you a, a nice transnasal view and you can see the os of the sphenoid very well. You can also see a little bit of the superior turbinate which is, which is medial and posterior to the, which we can see on the lateral, si on the lateral uh, view. The next um, optional trajectory or approach is a resection of the middle term of the middle turbinate which is what I'm doing now um, you start with a uh, cut of the superior part of it where it's close to its uh, attachment to the skull base or low enough that you're not that you're preserving mucosa and then you can either do a posterior cut a vertical cut or you can reduce it down the way I'm doing now I'm slowly um, just pulling the middle turbinate down all the way down to the nasopharynx and it will uh, just detach as a as an entire piece uh, in surgery that will commonly bleed and we will follow that with a suction bovine in order to um, to coagulate its uh, attachment that we just resected now we have a good view once we resected the middle turbinate we have a very nice view of uh, the os we see of course, first the superior turbinate, which is medial and behind the middle turbinate, once again, and we see 
the sphenoid os behind us. That's a very common procedure that that gives you a nice trajectory into uh, the os and into the sphenoid. We now do the same thing on the left side. It has a much smaller middle turbinate. It may have undergone reduction. And, uh, and again, we make a posterior cut along the su its superior attachment below the skull base, of course, remembering that we have our factory mucosa above us. And once again, you can either make a posterior vertical cut, or as I do here, you can just grab it and slowly reduce it inferiorly until it detaches and use a suction bovi in order to coagulate some venous bleeding that you're going to get. So our next module is a, is a complete vest, or a sphenoethmoidectomy, and, um, and that gives you a very wide trajectory um, through the nose. Some advocate as this as the workhorse. Um, I started off by, by um, bringing uh, into the coronal plane the uncinate process, and I'm now resecting that. There are various ways to do that, but um, it's mostly uh, folded posteriorly, and you have to, with a you can bring it anteriorly to the coronal plane and then you can resect it. And you do, and you resect it completely or you try to all the way to the lateral wall of, uh, uh, of the nasal cavity and superiorly it, it has a semi-lunar shape. Next I uh, will put in a uh, 30 degree endoscope and I will look laterally and inferiorly and what we see is the, is the maxillary os. Um, that comes into view once we resect the uncinate. And, um, and now we're opening up the, we're doing a medial maxillectomy. And commonly you open it from the os posteriorly and, um, and, and if there's an accessory os, you have to make sure that you connect between the two or that you don't have two openings. Um, and next, we're looking again with the 30 degree endoscope into the maxillary sinus and we can see the posterior maxillary wall that we're now cleaning of uh, blood and uh, behind it is the PPF right and we can see the nasal cavity once the antenate is removed So our next structure is the bulla, the bulla ethmoidalis, and, the, and we enter uh, inferior medially in it and open it up. And we similarly resect it first laterally and then superiorly. And uh, laterally we will take it all the way to the lamina papyracea. Uh, remember if you go to lateral you enter the, orb the orbit. And then we will take it up along the lamina papyracea, essentially all the way up to the skull base. And that is the major next uh, structure that we resect in the, in the ethmoidectomy. Once that is removed, we are staring at the stump of the middle turbinate, which we uh, resected initially, and, and, uh, and that continues on to become the basal lamella. That's the basal lamella of the middle turbinate. And again, we will do the same thing. We will define it here, and then we will resect it from inferior medial, first laterally, and then, as we can see here, take it all the way up to the skull base and I will do that with the kerosene. There are various ways to do that. So 
So we're we are now looking at the superior turbinate, and we're looking at the, some of the structures that we removed the, uh, before. So, and we can see the lateral nasal cavity or the lamina, and we can see the skull base up here. And um, and we're you're seeing the superior turbinate with its basal lamella that we're going to resect next. And again, that's not the face of the sphenoid yet because uh, the basal, the, the superior terminate also has a basal lamella, which is going to be the next thing we resect. And of course we can see the os, the sphenoid os behind us. So with the ball, ball tip here, I can, uh, I can feel the space between uh, the superior turbinate basal lamella and the face of the sphenoid. And here I'm resecting the basal lamella with the superior turbinate. The turbinate can be either reduced or resected or, or commonly also left in place, um, especially when we're thinking about olfact olfaction. So now once that's removed, when the superior or part of the superior turbinate and its basal lamella, the next structure that uh, we will be staring at is the os, of course, the sphenoid os, and the face of the sphenoid. And we're going to move on to start at the os and open it up. Often the os is not so large and we need a mushroom punch um, in order to enlarge it, but then uh, once it's large enough we can start biting away and we bite the same way we as we did before. We take it laterally and then superiorly and we slowly open it up uh, completely. So we can look into the sphenoid and see the, um, the optic nerve and we can see the carotid, uh, the genuine of the carotid artery and, um, and we'll see them later uh, of course again as we open things up. Our next step is to uh, open the posterior uh, nasal septum and to connect between the two uh, sphenoid sinuses. And what I'm doing now with the nerve hook, um, in surgery you would do with a needle tip bovi or a, or a knife. And I'm I made a, a horizontal cut in the septum and I usually do it through and through to both sides. And the next step, what I'm doing now is I'm actually uh, reducing the mucosa inferiorly while preserving it because the septal branch of the sphenopalatine artery comes from the PPF, the lateral um, side of the nasal cavity, and goes underneath or, or inferior to where this or sphenoid os is um, towards the nasal septum. And we want to preserve that, of course, for a flap or um, to preserve uh, the blood supply to the septum. So I reduced that, and then I, I found the os on the contralateral on the left side, and now um, I'm actually connecting between the two, the right and the left sphenoid os. And by reducing the mucosa, I actually, uh, what we see is the, is the keel. And I'm exposing that again while preserving the mucosa in order to preserve uh, the septal branch of the artery, or the sphenopalatine artery. And then I'm going to remove the keel while preserving the blood supply to the septum. So I, you can resect the, the keel uh, commonly with a, uh, with a drill. You either a diamond or a cutting drill and you uh, slowly reduce it and then finally uh, remove it and that helps uh, with finding the floor of the sphenoid sinus very well it, if you need to do, if you need to do a superior clivectomy or you need to reduce the floor um, you will commonly need to take the keel as I do here
So next I'm going to drill the intersinus septum. Remember that this septum at times uh, goes in the midline, but more commonly than not, it will not go down the, the middle of the sphenoid or in between the two sphenoid sinuses, but really take you towards one of the carotids. Um, in this case, it's going towards the left carotid. We're now going to do an anatomic tour and um, look at, at the entire um, cavity. So we're looking at the cellar floor, and next we see the carotid and optic on the right, then we see the carotid and optic on the left, the nasal, se the sphenoid septum, which we reduced, the maxillary os, and the cuina. And that completes the, the video of the surgical approaches into the cellar region.